Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2. I give you a clash of world champions. The best of the best on the left side here of Data C. The Italian Stallion. It's Rainer. With quite an opponent on the opposite side. Probably one of the only Terrans, if not the only Terran, who can contend with him in the entire world on an absolute tear and lately it is beyond well known for his micro but do not sleep on his macro he makes every single terran unit look overpowered and in fact so overpowered he's gotten some of them nerfed he's working on marines lately but we'll have to see with this home story cup playoff series if that is all we'll be looking at the reaper begins. Terran players have been doing this. Uh, they've been building the Reaper right on the edge, the barracks right on the edge, not really caring about those early circlings. I think that's one of the things you learn as you get better at StarCraft 2, the early Zerg rush. Those lings in your base right off the bat, yes, your big brother might have used that to beat you up in the Brood War, but uh, nowadays... It's later on with those roach timings that are most dangerous. And in fact, you don't even want your barracks to be that vulnerable because how else are you going to get units to defend it? Rainer, no stranger to roach timings, but I don't think we're going to see much here on Data C to start. Enjoy this map pool while it lasts. We're going to have a new map pool with the new season very soon in 2023. Well, now in 2023. So savor it. Savor it. Be like winter. I didn't play in any of those maps, and I'm not going to play in any of the new ones. Well, at the very least, you're already here. You can use 1 APM to like and subscribe, because uh, you're not going to have time. With these two, the fastest players in the world of their race, Raynor averages somewhere between 600 and 700 APM as Zerg, which obviously with Injax and Zerglings and Banelings morphing has a bit of a, a kind of a natural increase. but. Bion has clocked in at over 500 as Terran, which just considering how Terran works, is I've never seen I've never seen Maru that high, Clem that high, Bion as he ages, he's like a fine wine. Okay, you want to drink more and more of it, just like watching Bion games. That's that makes sense. Three, C, C. Uh, starting off about as macro orientated as you can get so far. Just a canceled uh, drone or, or extractor or spore card. Wait, what, what is canceled for six gas? You start a Banley nest or something? Uh, maybe. A Zergling comes in, confirms Hellions. And for now, both sides are going to go back to their corners. They're going to take a look around. Uh, and in fact, well, okay, well, the Overlord's Corner is right behind Beyond's base. Going to come in, try to get a look at the add-ons. The add-ons are the most telling and most relevant part of the early game for Terran. As you see here from Rainer, he doesn't see the icon, but he does see something upgrading. And very important here, he saw the starport with no tech lab. Just a naked starport, which is one way to phrase it. Uh... <laughs> That, that means it's very likely. In fact, already you see setting up with the spore crawlers. He knows it's very likely a Liberator and or a Medivac. Especially since he didn't see a Viking yet. But guess what? Liberator has already arrived. And those drones are feeling Liberator by now. Three of them to start. It's been a little while since we saw a Liberator opener. Beyond, as always, mixing it up uh, just a bit as we get into it. And... Oh, God, it's so annoying. Like, the queens can strongly discourage the Liberator, but overall, it's unlikely they'll kill it without the help of a Spore Crawler. And especially right now, Beyond, uh, he's keeping the Hellions on the edge of the creep, which means that Raynor can't really move his queens too far out. The Hellions are anchoring the queens far away from the Liberator, so it's just down to whatever um, domesticated queens are, are sitting at the hatcheries. Oh, <laughs> eats a couple hits. Buys time for the drones to get away. And with it, finally takes down that Liberator. The mining time, the actual drones killed. Annoying, but not devastating, right? Now. 
The one thing that might end up being devastating is Beyond's upgrade advantage. As he's already started 1-1, one, one, he's well along. He's like one-third of the way there before Raynor's even going to be finishing up his evolution chambers. Mainling speed is on the way. That ever-important upgrade. Without Mainling speed, you're going to struggle with any medevac timings. And medevac timings is essentially Beyond's middle name. And that was a really weird one for his Korean parents to name him. But here we are. Two spore crow or any parents. Not doesn't really matter what language. <laughs> you know what? Actually, it's probably least weird for Korean parents to name their child after StarCraft terms. But anyway, Beyond is older than StarCraft. One. But I mean, you, you. Why am I still on this? Moving on. Eighty drones. Stop. Got to focus. These are literally the two fastest players. I'm gonna miss something. Well, I'm definitely going to miss. Stop it. All right. Refocus because there are two medevacs coming out, and this is where the fun begins. For most people. Uh, for us, for Beyond, we'll see about for Raynor. As the first two medevacs with 1-1 one, one combat shield, Stim's already done, Me a Widow Mine's on the way, Hellion's clearing creep to the north side, that's gonna be the next target for the following medevacs. Hydra's Den starts for Raynor. Baneling speed five seconds off, Queen's drive out the Hellions. Baneling speed completed. Seconds before combat shield, but that means Beyond is gonna have to pick up and get out. Slurps up the Marines and escapes. Zergling surrounding the Hellions mid map. And Renner has 85 drones. He's bringing the Banes in, and Beyond has no space left to drop his Marines out. He has to retreat all the way home. I think the best defense against Beyond is a good offense. You've got to get up in his grill and keep him from getting those medevacs out there because those will be continued automatic firing thorns in your side. I'm not just talking about the Liberators, the Marines here. Or Widow Mine. Really, most Terran units. But <laughs> And here's Raynor on the counterattack. Spots a Widow Mine. Wow, beautifully done. He actually saw the indent there, uh, which is hard to see at a glance, but he's expecting it, I'm sure. I mean, he's the best, so... Just trying to defuse any mines here. Ten Hydras on the way. Beyond picks up. Where's he headed? He's going to the south. He's pushed back to creep the, uh, the creep to Rainer's side of the map. He's keeping control of it. Looks like those medevacs. Eh, just going in towards the third. There is a spore crow there, just slightly north. Swings back, queens on their way. The knitting crew is going to deal with it, but beyond always another prong. He goes towards the north with his main force here. Widowman will burrow in a precarious location. Marines looking for any opportunity to the south. A bit of a miss rally point here from beyond. Slightly sloppy, but not a critical amount of units. If you look at the supplies here, we're looking at Rainer and 90 to 93 army supply. That's the relevant part. And beyond picks up and he heads towards the north. <laughs> two more command centers on the way. Plus two, plus two, about to finish. The key part here is Beyond has not been pressured at home. There's been no counterattack, but the fourth base should be the focal point with which Raynor focuses his efforts. Of course, if he can ever pull himself together as Beyond tries to tear him apart. Four medevacs. Now the Hydras can discourage them from sticking around, but they can't quite hunt them down, especially as they fly back in towards the main. Infestation pit about to complete. Two, two, infantry weapons and armor. Widowman's going to burrow. A lot of Marines going down. It sounds like a lot, but remember, every Baneling that dies is, is also a Baneling that's gone. It's kind of their whole thing. And Beyond, if he trades two or three Marines for each Baneling, usually comes out on top in the long run. Oh, but the Hydras, of course, have anti-air capabilities. The Baneling's very much anti-ground. The Widowman's a little off-center here. Not getting the hits they need to protect the Marines. And Beyond forced to pick up and get out. The Mines defused. And cleared up. Beyond headed back, and that was just a straight up loss right there for Beyond. That he did there was no saving grace. He lost the medevacs to the northwest, and he lost the main a uh, chunk of the main army to the south. And now Rainer. He's gonna get two more. Wow, just kind of a sloppy game from Beyond so far. Mm, well, those banelings. Not quite finding the connections. It looked bad, but that's a good trade for Beyond overall. Assuming the Banelings aren't able to continue closing. And so far they aren't. Banelings find a few SCVs. Widowmine. It's a non-existent overseer. Beyond holds, but 
his his force on the other side, gunned down by Hydras. 37 more Banelings. Raynor has not missed a step here. He might have lost a hatch on either side, but he's now mining from a fifth base. He has 80 drones, two Vipers on the way, plus two melee attack. Beyond hasn't even started 3-3. He's prioritized having enough army supply to fight. But right now, can he win? Widowmine looking for an opportunity. Doesn't do anything. Another mine burrows. And that one might be a shot. Not quite. The Marauders trying to find a choke point here. Another mine. But Raynor is not eating the hits. Microing back. Beyond splitting. Just goes through the barracks here. No more barracks anymore. Hitting whatever he can. Raynor is bashing through. There's just not the critical mass of Marines, Marauders, and Medivacs left over. Widowmines connect onto the Hydras. But the bio army is stretched far too thin. And it looks like Raynor overwhelms Beyond in game one. Ooh, a pretty dominant performance from the Italian Stallion there. I'm, honestly, you gotta tighten it up, Beyond. That, uh, there are a couple screws loose on that one. Uh, a few units rallied out, a couple medevacs flying over Hydralis. You can't make these mistakes. Not against someone like Rainer. Well, let's see if he can pull it back together as we go into Waterfall Game 2. Home Story Cup Playoff Series. Like, subscribe. I I'm going to bring them up once again. We're trying new things. Jimmy and me had a, a big graphical design debate. He wanted nothing. I wanted something. But uh, make sure to leave your comments on the new cards. Are they too much? Too little? Too handsome? Well, we know the answer to that. But uh, I'm liking them. <laughs> a lot of people didn't know that the, the uh, uh, stuff was showing the ranks and all that before. But there's anything you want to see i do read your comments most of them if they're good comments i love them if they're not good comments don't worry i didn't read them well, that's a lie but it's one of those happy lies we tell on the internet so well we're back to it waterfall game two rainer hatch no i mean he has one but he's not getting another one he's getting a spawning pool he's getting a gas and uh we cut to the observer cam at a very awkward time didn't we um this is not your good side, Command Center. Ah, much better. Okay, thank you. Beyond gonna go for the wall off, though he hasn't added any additional racks yet. Usually, when you go for the wall in the front, this is a Reaper build. Um, but overall... Hmm. Oh, I didn't realize we turned up... This is a good time. We're losing it out here in the new year. I didn't know how bright I was. My natural eggshell complexion, but um, hopefully better. Like, why is your face on the screen in the first place, Winter? I like to think my, uh, I'm going to use the some air quotes, casting is more of a reaction to great StarCraft than your suit and tie, uh, or at least collared shirt, or pocket square if you're GSL. Anyways, your, your, because, because not, not all the games. In fact, most of them are. But, uh, I love showing good games to the fans, and I hope that shows through. Well, Overlord down. No pervert pillar for you. Uh, yeah, we're trying some new things in the new year. And by that, I mean mostly the same things, but hopefully a little bit better. Yeah. Beyond suspects. He, well, he already saw the hatchery timing. Which gave enough away. The hatchery timing means Rainer has something in his mind. He didn't actually see anyone. He just saw the hatch and went back. I'm not sure if he was hiding it. I'm pretty sure the SCV was scouted by an overlord, but either way, beyond not taking any chances, he's just taking his natural. And he's doing it quite quickly. That is a wall off, right? We had some interesting interactions on this map before with weird wall off. Uh Zergling speed. Completed. But I think Raynor realizes he's been scouted and without another key point of losing that Ovi. Ravager all ins severely uh, re hampered, reduced, um, hamstrung, uh, essentially locked, uh, negated. Because without the high ground vision to be able to start sieging, you're unlikely to be able uh, to kill any buildings 
especially a bunker, uh, meaningfully, without losing your Ravagers, that is. Of course, Rainer didn't go for the Ravagers, it's just beyond already eliminated the possibility or probability by killing that Overlord. Alright, what are we doing here? <laughs> beyond just builds a tech lab for the Cloak Banshees, just puts at the front. Why not? He, in fact, Rainer saw the flip here, which... Wow. Is it going to work? Because Rainer may very well think that was for Stim. There's no Bane Lane Nest. If he thought this was Hellbats or Cloak Banshee, I mean, maybe you get the lair, but... I can't... Well, is it Cloak Banshee or is that a fake? Because he... He hasn't built any man. He's going for a hell battle. It's a Banelene Nest on the way. Hey, he's getting a Banshee behind it. Why not? I think part of it was if you scout this, well, then you're going to think it's Banshees. Uh, and the second part is, of course, you know, ac actually Banshees. <laughs> mm. oh, wait, okay, left, right, left, right. Which way are we going? Uh, probably whichever way is going to help combine this into a hell battle and thing is he showed the medevac and he and Rainer knows there was a there was a reactor factory so all signs point to hellbats he should at this stage I'm seeing that factory move have a very good idea of what this is but he hasn't built a single bane lane he's building five now but the hellbats are already on the creep you don't get brownie points for that they're right there Well, Hellbats making their way up the ramp. Banelings are about to complete. Down goes the medevac. Probably the most important part of all this. Bane well, Banelings don't seem to really do anything. You know, this kind of looks like most of the Hellbats all in Hellbat all-ins we've seen. Essentially, I, I feel like Cure's the only player who really, really commits to the Hellbats. Cure with, like, his repair SCVs and his... Very careful medevac micro. Okay, what is this Flex Terran Bio Curious build here? I I I, I want to talk about Kira more, but I need to talk about what Beyond's doing because he's getting plus one mech weapons. Is he just getting that for his tanks? I I mean, you have an armory. It's not that expensive. A hundred, a hundred is nothing. It's one more medevac for. Uh, and attack upgrades on tanks scale quite well as as you get a bonus to both the single target and the splash. But I, I like how he's just using using the whole buffalo as um, I I think nobody in StarCraft would call it, but came to mind. So you have an armory, use an armory. Then he builds uh, another one when he forgets he he already started one for two two, which is a very pro gamer move. I will say, one thing Beyond doesn't forget, and I've now cursed him, past, present, and future, but it's combat shield. He does not forget. It's it. No matter if you're silver to Maru, players forget combat shield way too often. Like, even pro games, I think 5 to 10% of games, either way too late or not at all. Just because you didn't queue it up, kind of forgot about it, until it was very obvious you needed it. But Beyond, I think, cues that up as soon as he has the resources and stims like halfway. Just make sure he has that valuable 10 HP. That's a stim of HP right there. And those stims are very important. Well, Rainer's at 64 drones, but does he have the army? He doesn't have Bane speed. These plus one tanks show it up, and he's just gunning down two hatcheries at once like it's the campaign. Uh... Well, Raynor does have an alternative base that's halfway done, but... Excuse me, sir. You can't You can't just do... He just walks up and kills two bases. Baneling speed is done, but 1-1 one, one is completed. Oh, well, plus one attack. Plus one armor's on the way for the Marines. For being... Dropping some tanks. No, walking's too slow. And vulnerable to Zerg, so I'll give him that. Those plus one tanks, though, still one-shotting. Usually they'd survive a tank hit, but Beyond has the plus one, which allows them to continue to one-shot mainland. God. This is, this is quite an attack. This is the tight timing we were looking for. 
Bion has, has cinched his build. And right now, it, it might be a little too much. It's suffocating right now. Yeah, that was an optimistic base. Waterfall is a tough base. Uh, once you lose momentum as a Zerg, like, Beyond doesn't even have a third. What are you going to do? Counterattack? A two base Terran? Up a ramp? That, a ramp that has multiple buildings at the top of it? I mean, usually they do, but the buildings are supply depots, not a factory or a barracks. <laughs> That is a, a tough ramp to break. It looks like Rainer just going to go for the full surround here with everything he's got. And Beyond is very aware of this. He's already pre-split here. He's on the creep. A double drop heading out towards the opposite side. Well, tanks. Oh, he unseeged like all his tanks. Rainer's like, well, now or never, but there's already going to be some Marines on the high ground. He could potentially evacuate here. The positioning is disgusting. One Marine to block the, the area protecting the tanks. Buys him three or four more tank shots at least. And even if he cleans up the tanks here, the main base is gone. The spawning pool very likely alongside it. And but wait, there's more. That's another double drop on the other side. He target fires most of the mains down. Yeah, some of the marines kind of get stuck there, but... Oh god, the main... There goes the... The pool's gone. The pool, he lost the spawning pool. He can't build anything. He doesn't have anything else. He can't build queens. Can't build zerglings. He can morph some banelings, but the queen's trying to hold the ramp. But the DPS of the marines is too damn high. The medivacs are kind of out of energy, but... Oh god, one baneling, two baneling, none baneling left over. Oh, come on, get your silly Banelings out of here. Come out here. If you don't have double-digit Banelings, all it is is target practice. Yeah, oh my god. This is a micro-trainer for Beyond. I don't... Okay. One more. Oh, he missed! He missed! He missed a shot. Yeah, he's human. I don't even know what Rainer's trying to do here. Come on, Rain. He knows. He knows. He still had some units. Had to go for it. He knows where this is headed. There it is. Beyond. Grabbed one back. Ooh. That. That was a Terran's Terran right there. That was a two base tank timing with plus one tanks. That he just drove a spike into Raynor's base. Just Raynor had nothing. The Hellbats didn't. It, you could make an argument they slowed him down, but. I don't think that's a great one. I think it was Rainer overdrowned maybe one wave, and suddenly you just, you literally cannot put enough units on the field to engage that army. Not in time. Not before he's already killing your bases. And here we are. I'll tie it up game three. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that is a little bit like game one, where, where Beyond made a few mistakes and Raynor did not take long to turn the tables on him. Beyond lost a few extra units and, and Raynor's critical mass ran him over. And I think with Terran, it's a little easier to directly do that, especially if you're already focused on a, a direct, like, a two-base timing. But a very similar Raynor may be a little inefficient early. And then a little greedy after. And just simply doesn't have the production to engage. You have to overwhelm the army. You have to have so many mainlings. He literally can't target them all down. Because he will. He just will. And this is the struggle with Terran, right? Like, the difference between Beyond... And, like, you put 17 Diamond Leaguers in Archon mode and give them each a Marine. And they'll probably have worse target fire than Beyond. And that's just how it is. Uh, speaking of micro-oriented units, we've already got two racks on the way. As Beyond has decided, he, he issues the Hellion Banshee build. He will do whatever he can to avoid it. Because that's boring, sad, standard, whatever. I don't... We're going to go Reapers. Two racks, Reaper. Just walling off the natural. Why not? Uh, pretty much, well, almost every early game build beyond us maybe besides that last game is 
one unit loss away from putting him in a terrible spot for the next five minutes. Like, if he loses two or three of these Reapers just from a second of Miss Micro, well, then Raynor gets four bases and 70 drones before Beyond can move out again, because this really does slow down the rest of your tech. Reapers cause gas. Building a second barracks delays your command center. But at the same time, Reapers are possibly the most microable early game unit that any race has access to. In fact, we design maps around Reapers. We give them their own little employee entrance so they can jump up into the base. How convenient. And you're going to complain about pervert pillars or players. I'm just saying, this is not on the new patch. Not that the new patch or the new maps have any major changes to Reaper Cliffs or Overlord Pillars or whatever, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear complaints about uh, Overlord Pillars if we're still going to design half the main around where Reapers can jump up or Colossi can accidentally rally down because technically they could step over cliffs. Is Rainer Baneling busting? Well. We know that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> to answer my question, yes. Uh, he's, he's seen the Reapers. He knows what he's dealing with. Is It looks like... Well, he has his choice. He can go through the, the tech lab here. Or through any of the depots. This uh, kind of comes down to hiding it for long enough. Well. Yeah, three purse. Ten. I, huh. Well, Stim's a long way off. There's not that many Marines. There's no bunker on the way. Was that many? He hasn't shown the Banes. The Banes, if if he saw Banelings, or he knew Banelings were on the way, the Un would have a bunker. He doesn't know. This could be an utter disaster. Oh, no. Well, he sees it. He's getting some grenades out. He gets up to the high ground. Best case scenario here so far for Beyond. He's already retreating. The Marine's gonna get what target fires. Beautiful! But the Marines, well... Uh, I mean, there's only so many of them. He lost a couple Reapers. The numbers... Well... The numbers don't lie! And they spell disaster for you! He gets the Baneling. Yes, Baneling targeting is amazing. He's holding... And Raynor only has 18 drones, so as long as Beyond survives, well, he needs to rewall that now. Well, this was not as devastating as it could have been, though. The damage is starting to add up. The Zerglings are still in the base. You don't want Zerglings in your base. So that's the oldest thing. You'll find you say Google Zerg Rush and things I. <laughs> okay, well. Worker counts are even, which is still heavily in favor of the Terran. Assuming that can continue, he's going to retreat from the natural. Might want to bring those bears to wall off the high ground. Full retreat. Raynor not giving this up. He dropped, a, he dropped it to drop a mule. Combat shield about to complete. There is no wall at the ramp! The Zerglings. They get in again, but combat shield is done. And Beyond is making a mountain out of this molehill right now. <laughs> It's not over yet. If he can hold the ramp, he's got a triple depot wall here. I don't know why he stopped building one of those. Does he just want to cancel it, or... He just... I don't... I guess? Uh, that was a kind of a weird choice. Well, Rainer's at... He, he's droning up. There's not enough. You need at least... I think technically it's four banelings, but more realistically five banelings, because if not everyone perfectly connects to get through those depots. Or I might just be wrong on that number. Either way, five banelings is the reliable number. Minimum. A Reaper has 13 kills. Beyond has Marines. And no game is over while that statement is still true. Yes, Rainer. I think he managed to get the damage he needed. The Reaper is going to be used for a pretty full scout. I think it's confirmed now that indeed Rainer's macroing it up. There's not going to be a bunch of Banelings. There's not another huge group of Zerglings. Beyond has... Well, his suffering... Well, has ended for now, the Zerglings. Oh my god! Oh my god! I was so close! 
He may still escape. Okay, oh my, that Zergling reached up and grabbed his leg. Beyond almost parted the blue sea there. And managed to, to pop the Zerglings out of the path of the Reaper. Not quite. But it was far too close for comfort. God, you can't keep getting away with it. He really, it, it's such a gamble right now. Does he move out and just go? Like when? Does he just show the Marine? Because he knows, like, he's going to get the OV. He uses a scan and then moves to intercept. He knows Raynor has to respect it. Raynor's going to have to build Zerglings. The question is, for both players, is it a bluff? And is it worth it? Like, does he actually move? Because the Marines are staying on top of the ramp. Raynor is still building drones. He's got plus one carapace on the way. There should be enough marines to hold back at home here. Beyond. Well, there's stim marines at the top of the ramp. And I think this gives away to Rainer that indeed he, he's coming across. Here come the banelings. Eh. Well, a bit of a pre-split there. No medivax, no nothing. He went to the edge of the creep, even threw a scan on. Are there any banelings at the back? I don't believe so, no. Even more? If Beyond can keep this group of marines alive and undead, aka not collapsed upon by banelings until the medivacs come out, he may have served his purpose, which is forcing out zerglings and limiting Raynor's economy. Problem is he's limited to like 50 drones, which is enough. It's not incredible, but in context, it's enough. Not those Marines. They're scary without Bane Speed. You still can't really fight. It, there's so many Zerglings out here. Where are the Medivacs? The Banelings are coming across the bridge. Raynor is hunting. But who's hunting who is the question. And guess what? It's the Banelings who will be hunted. But wait, here come the Zerglings. There's just too many of them. Oh. He had a false sense of security. He thought, he's like, well, it's time. Finally, micro time, but there's just too many lings. And here we are again. The Bane Lings busting through the ramp. Now the SCV's vulnerable. They'll try to hold the line. And you know what? They'll kind of do it, but not nearly well enough. Raynor's second Bane bust breaks through. At least twice as many as it would take almost any other player, I think, but Ah, <sighs> be unfalse. A little bit too greedy on the push-out. And it will cost him. Very hard to judge that scenario. But he's been found wanting. As we go into match point. Jimmy. As we go into match point. Beyond. Why won't you just wall normal? Ah. Rainer not respecting the barracks wall. The thing about having a wall at the natural is you probably don't have one up to the main. So if they do actually get through that front, he's just going to do it again. I think Stargazer is a much better map for the Reaper aggression. Uh, exploits the map a bit. But... Uh, it's gonna be Reapers, right? No, I don't, we're not gonna find out until the barracks finish, but... Wait. No, no, no. It's not. No. Oh, winter. Edit, edit this out. He doesn't have gas. It's not Reapers. He's not going Reapers without gas. That's how it works. That's how the StarCraft works. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I apologize. Making all these assumptions without knowing there's a mini-map or a production tab. Though why does he have two? <laughs> and he's just building marines. Is he faking reapers for, like, but no, he's not. He's just showing the oak. Yeah, well, it's obviously not reapers. Here. There's a supply depot. Is this explicitly for the Overlord? 
I don't. Just somewhere it's not gonna get killed early. Oh, that overlord died. Extra gross. Well, Overlord's not definitely not a big winner in this series. Overlord's finding very creative ways to die with me on, on the other side of it. He's hunted down so many of those early Ovis. But Raynor does have a comfortable margin now. I think uh, Beyond really hasn't been able to play his game. Game 1 was a sloppy interpretation. Game 2 was a great execution, but we haven't seen that kind of uh, precise maxed out multitasking that he's known for. Uh, and I bet if Rainer has any control over the situation, we, we won't. <laughs> two more... Two... Two more racks on the way. He's, he's like, I'll do the same build, but instead of the silly Reaper part, I'm just going to make a bunch of Marines. <laughs> I mean... Beyond's going to be on. Stim's on the way. How many, how many tech labs are we building? Two tech labs, so... Likely combat shield, gonna join it. Yep. He's, he's just a bunch of more, like... So, on this side of the map, the add-ons are protected. Uh, a Baneling bust has significantly less opportunity to break through. Of course, there's still a depot in the wall. But there's going to be a lot more Marines quickly here. Uh, as he went straight into Marines. And used his gas for add-ons and tech as opposed to a handful of reapers to start. And those reapers, while they were very helpful, they definitely slowed down his tech so much he was vulnerable to the Baneling Bust. And that's what Raynor exploited. Yeah, go on out there, Billy. Yeah, we're going zergling hunt. No, don't worry. We'll be right back here. We'll back you up. But what if, I, what if I'm out of range? Well, don't worry about that. I don't... You got this. All right, 10 Minerals says you can't get all the Zerglings back here. What if I lose? Well, don't worry about that, Billy. <laughs> well, he's shown four Marines, but Raynor knows. He knows that two barracks with a tech lab upgrading, it doesn't leave a lot of room for imagination. And he knows who he's playing against as well, so. Combat Shield of Marines already on the way across. Reinforcements trickling there. It's just a bunch of Marines. Well, there's a Baneling Nest on the way. How many Queens? I got eight Queens. The Octo Queen Defense. Well, the Queens on the high ground. The Marines, they do have Stim. No other upgrades. Does he go? He goes. Well, target fire's there. Just burning through. Gonna get another queen. More target fire. Gunning down the lings as they get close. Stim's about to run out. Got a pretty large amount of progress. He traded double there. Uh, Rainer loses 1250 minerals so far to just 650. But of course, it's about critical mass. If the marines... And their, their just total HP drops under a certain level. The Zerglings just run them down. So, it is a very... It's a tightrope walk here. Beyond a gymnast. Or, is that tightrope walkers gymnast? Some, they're, they're a form of gymnast. I don't think, like, they're like they're not like a sports gymnast. They're like a performance gymnast. Um... Not that it that in that case is beyond his one at least one of those. Either way. <laughs> they definitely have <clears throat> Metavacs on the way. A similar situation to last game without Bion already being hamstrung economically. So Metavacs on the way out. Zerglings looking for the surround on the very lonely marines here, and the Metavacs are heading nowhere close to where these marines are. Oh, he stems. Can he get enough? One, two, three, four. <laughs> I mean, he gets the rest, but that's quite a victory there. <laughs> yeah, Banelings without speed. Target practice indeed. Of course, enough Zerglings left over that uh, Rainer able to hold on. But here we go. 
another set. He's gonna use that beachhead base. Usually a comfortable back base for essentially not Zergs. But it's just a staging area for Beyond's drops here. Well, Beyond actually going to expand forward. Uh, it wants to keep the aggression up. So the reason why a lot of Terrans, not a lot, but many Terrans will expand forward like this is your reinforcements walk out of your barracks, right? So the best way to protect your newest bases is simply to have them where your reinforcements are. So since Terran production works like that, it makes a lot of sense to just keep expanding kind of towards your opponent. He's escalated the situation now. Uh, unloading the Marines. They've landed. And now they've landed on the... Okay, put your right Marine in. Take your right Marine out. Take your red Marine in. And shake it all about. Mineral walls are strong and they can't be killed by bullets. That's what it's all about. The mules are actually kind of effective. Terran OP in so many ways. One, two, three. And the rest of the main link surfs up, gets out. <sighs> So stressful, yet amazing to watch. Now, is he ready? A couple more Marines down, but keeping the pressure on and pinning so many Zerglings and Banelings back. Three more barracks on the way. Plus two attack, just plus one armor. Raynor going just for the Carapace upgrades, trying to absorb as many Marine bullets as possible. And I guess if Marauders are mixed in, indeed they are. Uh, as as Bion trying to give himself a bit of a meat shield there. Marauders probably their best purpose. Oh, Widow Mind Drop, bottom left. Eh. Diffused for now. Hydra was done. Plus one melee, plus two carapace. Rainer. Plus, uh, one one's done for beyond, but... Oh, oh, oh that widow by positioning! Oh! Well, I mean, it's gonna be... He even gets the mine out, wow. He, he jammed it in between the minerals so the zerglings couldn't get the surface area on it to kill it in time. Uh, the attention to detail. Well, we'll see if it pays off in general. Well, looks like we got our... Full on macro game. Beyond in a pretty solid spot, but Rainer. The only thing he's missing is an infestation pit for a hive. It is a pretty big thing to be missing, though. Hi a lot more hydras on the way. Rainer's at 82 drones. Beyond's only at 61 SCVs, which one means his army supply is huge. And two means he doesn't quite have that late game economy. Usually went more like 70, 75. That gives Raynor a pretty huge income advantage. But right now, the army supply and upgrades in favor of the Korean Terran. Well, that Medivacs, Marines, Mines, and Marauders. The M and M and M and M. Yep. Uh, build strong right now. The Marauders tanking as much and slowing as much as they can with concussive shells. And that's simply not enough Zerg. The red wave washes over, but the Banelings. Looking to counterattack. Gotta be careful about picking up the Hydras and Queens are here now, but all oh, a few Widow Mines. Cover some of the retreat. Gets the base. Key point. Widow Mine drop at the third as well. Rainer reacts. Widow Mine gets. Eh, not too much. Rainer holding for now. Oh, some of the Queens getting cut right up. Even the rocks, not uh, safe from Beyond's wrath. Not sure if that's intentional. I guess he wants to open up more opportunities. Oh, uh, the queens may be caught, but some banelings at the back. Does he have the target fire for this? Not quite. Oh, a chunk of marines left behind this time. Beyond, it's a lot to manage across the map right now. He still has the army supply. He started plus three. He's got his fourth base on the way. Widow Mine still taking chunks, but. Rainer continually maxed out. The one thing I'm gonna point out is the is the infestation pit. He just started it a bit ago. No hive on the way yet. Oh. 
Hydralis range about to complete. Plus one ranged attack and plus two melee about halfway done for Raynor, who's consolidated his half the map. He has almost everything but the back base and the gold. Whereas Beyond has just the four. He's adding a command center. He hasn't taken his back base either. Is far from contesting the gold. He's maxed out. It's time. He's going to have plus three infantry. Does he have drilling claws? He does not. It's just marines, marauders, mines, and medevacs. He's got 11 medevacs, 11 marauders, 11 mines. Apparently, that's the perfect number. The one, 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 one. And then a bunch of marines. 60 of them right now. That's all the supply he has left. Oh my god, quite a depot gauntlet. A widow mine hidden behind the sensor tower. A bit disgusting there. And it takes a chunk out of the counterattack, and that means whoop, the Widow Mine's hitting the Medivacs alongside those Zerglings. Already gonna soften them up, making evacuation potentially much more difficult. We got a Ghost Academy on the way. Mm hmm. Well, Hive finishing up. Plus three command sensors as well. Plus three infantry. Huge Widowmine hit opens up an opportunity to breach the front. The Marines stim forward. One, two, three, four. Each one Baneling hit targets the rest, but so many Banelings from the north side. Marines forced to split on the creep. Not ideal. Beyond eating a lot of Bane hits, biting off probably a bit more than he could chew here. Widowmine's diffused. Ah, uh, that- those Widowmines hitting the medevacs earlier are definitely not making things easy or trying to retreat. Some... Queen's holding the line. Beyond. Looked good to start, but Raynor has the economy for so many Banelings. Oh. A scan, spotting for that back base. Sees the units patrolling. Hive deck on the way. A scan to the south as well. We got Lurker Range. Up against, now, Liberators. Ghost Academy's finished. No ghosts yet. As both sides kind of... We we're, we're draw to a, a, a bit of a stalemate on that mid-game tech. The Marine Marauder, Mine Medivac, up against the Hydraling Bane. And now we're adding in those late-game options. Lurkers, Vipers, up against Ghosts and Liberators. Both very able to rip one another apart. It really does depend on execution. Income has gone to Rainer for all but the last few seconds. As Beyond has finally established another base. Always another medevac drop. Beyond's very good about not providing a target. He's even... Wow! <laughs> He's establishing the beachhead with Liberators. Covering fire for the potential... Are those hold position lurkers? I believe they were. And they eviscerate the drops. They don't actually start firing till Beyond was entirely within range. It may have just been a slight. I think he hold position. Uh, or hold fire, rather. Oh, oh, oh Beyond the SCV micro. Oh, oh, what a save. Oh, what a teleporting save. planetary. Oh, Beyond's SCVs have the micro potential of any of his other units, maybe more so. I don't... He keeps it alive. Will it matter? Ah, uh, maybe. Actually, keeping that base intact could change the tide of this game. As Beyond needed that, he needs he needs to stay flexible. He needs to have options of where he where he can defend. If Rainer commits everything to one base, Beyond needs to have the option to defend another. He can't be forced up against a wall. That's how you get shredded by lurkers. If if Rainer can pin him down in one location, the lurkers can kill him. But on the open field, the lurkers can be surrounded, hunted down, sniped, and killed. Usually in that order. Four or five more command centers on the way, which seems a bit ambitious, but... No, okay, six. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. It is ambitious. That's a bit much, sir. The wow, the snipes scatter throughout the field. The Banelings trying to crash through. Changelings kind of getting in the way of everything. A lot of ghosts going to die here. But a whole bunch of lurkers as well. Raynor loses a lot of gas. Beyond gets out with a drop just before static defense finishes. Six command centers, sir. Six. Okay. I hey, he's planning for the future, though. At, at some point, you can just use mules instead of SCVs. 
despite how helpful those SCVs are at saving the day. Uh, and I think that's part of the process, as well as just planetaries to haul off. Holding the high ground here, Snipes. I'm pretty much everything can get a hold of. SCVs trying to hold the line. Lurkers burrowing. Banelings connecting with ghosts. Though they don't do great against them. They're not horrible either. A lot of supply down here for Beyond. A few snipes come out, but uh, if you lose a critical mass of ghosts, the lurkers can just pounce on you. That lurker to the south, and this is... It's starting to get bad for Beyond. He's down 30 army supply. It's not starting. It's, it's definitely rough here. He has the command centers. If he can build enough army here to deal with the lurkers and push Rainer back, well, that's the take. He's, he's using, it seems like, Widowmine's uh, whole position uh, in order to take out those Widowmines, but Widowmine's not the biggest threat here. It's the ghosts, for sure. Whatever one's beyond can find. He gets a, a single shot off. I don't know if uh, SCV Micro is going to save you this time. Beyond just, uh, he doesn't have the army supply. He's out of minerals. Maybe investing in six command centers? I, 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 eh, it'd be nice to have those minerals for ghosts right now. <laughs> The Hydra count is too damn high. The Liberators cannot stay on the field. The ghosts have been reset. He's lost 15 of them. Widow Mines are not finding the connections. And Beyond is pinned down to just four bases. He still has that back base he could use. I'm very surprised. He's now taking, he's moving a command center over there. So he, he's got a lifeline here, but Rainer has consolidated his position. He is at 200 supply. The only way to get stronger is Bane Links. The alpha damage, the first strike potential of those Bane Links, unrivaled in the Zerg army here. Widowmines takes some of the Zerg Links, but there's dozens more flooding in behind. Full energy vipers. Beyond retreats to his natural parasitic bombs on the, on the Metapax, doing terrible, terrible damage. The ghosts will cloak. But they can't, they're badlings everywhere. The lurker's coming through. He might get a few snipes, but the energy was used for cloak. Raynor is shredding his bases. His SCVs are down. The supply plummets. No amount of micro's gonna save you from this much Zerg. Raynor just held down the Zerglings, the Hydras, the Badlings. He continued building so many of them. Be unplanned for the future, and Raynor planned for the present. He presents far too much army. Rainer overruns beyond. Some great micro, always flashy, but Rainer with some really solid, stable macro Zerg here. And he wins the day, quite convincingly, in my opinion. A little bit too fancy. That it has oftentimes in the past been the, uh, the downfall of beyond. And, uh, well, we'll see if we can shore that up. Rainer, well, he's he's right up there with the best, if not the best. So, what did you think? I hope you enjoyed. What do you think about the new player cards? Uh, and what about this video Jimmy put up right just for you, for you? Thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Thank you to Home Story Cup. Good luck, have fun. Stay tuned.